In folklore, a werewolf is a human who has the ability to turn oneself into a wolf, or as modern film dictates, a hybrid creature that's part man and part wolf. This usually comes about because of either a curse, or because the human in question possesses some divine ability allowing them to morph into a crazed, bloodthirsty monster. In other tales, a werewolf is able to transform another human by either scratching or biting them, similar to a vampire. The idea of werewolves is a widespread concept, especially because of how they have been brought into the limelight of today's media and film. They're often portrayed as feared beasts, some possessing super strength and are generally menaces to societies. But what if I told you that werewolves may not have been just fictional creatures? Belief in werewolves began around the same time that witches were being persecuted in the late Middle Ages across Europe. In fact, as early as the 15th century, werewolf trials were even held to condemn those who were either accused of being a werewolf or who were straight up proud of it. Some accusations could even be mixed with wolf riding, or wolf charming, which is the supposed act of casting spells on wolves and having them do one's bidding. In fact, in places like Estonia, werewolf hunting and werewolf trials became more common than the persecution of witches. The phenomenon would spread across Bavaria and Austria, all the way into the early 18th century, so it begs the question as to whether people misunderstood what they were seeing on a global scale, or whether werewolves did indeed roam the land once upon a time. In Eastern Europe, most notably Estonia, occult practices often took place by pagans who were defying the Christian church. For these pagans did not believe in Satan, and weren't interested in the destruction of Christianity. Instead, they were more keen on learning malevolent spells, as well as the transformation into werewolves. It wasn't until this became more common knowledge that the church take offence, and decide that even though pagans weren't satanic in nature, they were still labelled so. In fact, any member of society who accused another of being a werewolf was pressured by the authorities to adjust their story so it matched the more linear model of witchcraft. 18 women and 13 men were accused of being werewolves between the 16th and 18th century in Estonia. The accused would confess to have been given their wolf-like appearance by either another person through a bite or a scratch, or simply by encountering a demon who had cursed them. Sometimes they were even said to claim they had eaten something. Like in the case of a woman on trial who claimed she had been led into the woods by an old woman. This old woman then gave her berries to eat, and then in the blink of an eye, she and the old woman were hunting in the woods as wolves. Wolves were only said to be part of the transformation, according to the testimony of a pagan named Gret of Parnor, who claimed that he and his spouse would turn into wolves, but that a female accomplice of their group would take the shape of a bear. Gret never claimed to have association with Satan, but like I said earlier, it suited the church to have everyone believe that this form of magic was indeed satanic, and so they were said to adjust many of the confessions so they seemed more in tune with that of witchcraft. As late as 1696, a woman named Greta gave testimony that there were a whole pack of 11 werewolves hunting and roaming freely in the woods around central Estonia. Could it be possible that they're still there, hiding and waiting? Another more infamous trial from Estonia comes in the form of Hans the Werewolf. In 1651, Hans was brought to court having been accused of being a werewolf at the age of 18. He had confessed that he'd been hunting as a werewolf for the better part of two years, and claimed that he'd gotten his powers from a man in black. Hans would also show the court a wound he had sustained on his leg from the teeth of a dog, one he had earned supposedly in his werewolf form. Though capable of communicating and obeying social rules in court, Hans claimed to feel more beast than man as a result of his transformation. The court, however, believed that the man in black was actually Satan, and therefore deemed Hans as nothing more but another who had been led astray by the devil, and judged him guilty of witchcraft. In another case over in Livonia, now modern-day Latvia, 
A similar case took place in 1692. An 80-year-old man named Theus confessed to being a werewolf who, with other werewolves, regularly ventured to hell to do battle with the witches and wizards of Satan in the name of God. Theus was pretty proud of his confession and stuck by it as if it was the utmost truth. Perhaps it was. The court, however, were far more interested in getting Theus to admit that he was actually in the service of Satan so that they could mark him simply as another Satanist who was practicing witchcraft and not an actual werewolf. But Theus never confessed to this, even after he was sentenced to a severe whipping. He was said to be banished after that. Werewolf trials even took place in the Netherlands. During one infamous trial, a man named Falkert Dirks was accused of sorcery, along with his 17-year-old daughter, Hendrika, his 14-year-old son, Hessel, his 13-year-old son, Elbert, his 11-year-old son, Gilbert, and his 8-year-old son, Dirk. 13-year-old Elbert claimed in court that he, his father, and his siblings could all turn into werewolves, or even sometimes cats, at the command of Lord Satan. He recounts that Satan directed them to liaise with others who shared the same ability, and that they would all dance together with Satan in a ceremony before hunting other animals as werewolves. Upon this testimony, Volkert Dirks was tortured to confess that he had been made a werewolf by Satan and attacked cattle in this form, along with his children. Hendrika, who was the oldest and only daughter, was forced to confess that she was a witch and attended witches' sabbaths in honour of Satan. Both her, her father, and a few others who had been implicated were all executed for witchcraft. The sons of Dirk, however, were spared, despite openly admitting to being werewolves because of their age, and instead were whipped. Johann Martensen was another man who in 1595 confessed to being made a werewolf by Satan and was ordered to hunt in a pack of 8-10 to ten other werewolves to hunt and harm people. He also claimed to possess the ability to bewitch people and animals into the service of Satan. During his periods of transformation, he claims to have been unable to speak, but maintained full consciousness as a werewolf. He was executed the same year by being strangled and then burned at the stake. Trials against werewolves would carry on into the late 17th century, where two men known as Thomas Batons and Augustin de Moore were accused of being werewolves simply because their wives were standing for trials of witchcraft. To make matters worse, their own wives even turned on them, outing them as both werewolves. Another account has it that Jean van der Vogel of Ghent was accused of being seen as a werewolf several times by his neighbour. He was burned alive for witchcraft in 1652, but before he was burned, he pointed out the same neighbour as being an accomplice, and guess what? He was also burned too. One of the last cases of werewolf executions takes place in 1657, where a man named Mathis Stoop was executed for sorcery after being accused of tormenting his own neighbourhood as a werewolf. He was forced to confess that Satan had given him his wolf skin and was later executed. So as you can see, there were a lot of trials for werewolves documented throughout history, though I think it's safe to say that if werewolves were about, they certainly aren't about anymore. One of the reasons why there is so much intrigue around creatures like werewolves is because there was simply no way to capture evidence of these creatures at the time, thus leading us to ponder on whether such beasts could have actually roamed the earth. Whether or not there were actually werewolves or not is up for you to decide, though I find it interesting that the concept of werewolves was spread so far in the Middle Ages. Could it be that folklore around werewolves was passed around Europe? allowing for the accused to draw upon the same inspiration? Or could it be that the reason why the trials around werewolves were so similar was because they actually did happen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're interested in more werewolves, do check out my Peter Stump video, which you can see on screen here. As always, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.